Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Again, I uh, hope you're going to have some very happy holidays, as, as these coming days, if you will, and and uh, I'm sure, I'm sure the kids are going to enjoy the, this, this particular time. However, uh, as you know, I always start off the program, uh, i.e. identifying uh, with vets. That's another issue that I think is very, very important. And um, uh, just wanted to make sure that you, you, get your, you, know, you, you get your loved ones, if you will, to go out and visit the VA and, and get, your, your, get them registered, if you will. And there might be benefits, especially in the Vietnam War aspect of it or any other uh, uh, related wars, if you will, to the VF, VFW, veteran of, if they are veterans of foreign wars and whatever. But no, do get them to go to the VA. And again, I'm still a little concerned about uh, folks uh, uh, identifying themselves as vets sitting on the corner with, with signs and, all, and the like and whatever. Again, as I indicated before, have them pull out their card, uh, their VA card, and if they don't have one, they, if you don't mind, be, you know, they put them in the car and take them down to the VA. And if they don't have one, then maybe you can just send, take them to another one of those agencies or whatever. Here. But anyway, but again, welcome to the show, Voters Digest. Uh, we're going to have a very interesting show today. I, I have with me as my guest today, uh, uh, Mr. Calvin Henry. Calvin has been in, been in, in Oregon for, for a number of years, but most important, he has, he has, um, he has developed an organization that, um, uh, that really did, talks to, to politics, but talks to black folks here in the state of Oregon. And we're going to spend some time with him. We're going to first spend a little time with Cal in regards to uh, how he came to Oregon and and uh, a little bit, little bit about his background and how he organized his organization, Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs. And then we're going to learn a little bit more about that organization. But then we're going to take a break, and then we're going to focus on another issue, whatever. Welcome, Glenn. Yeah. Thank you, Bruce. How you doing? Glad you to doing? be here. Fine, fine, fine. Well, look, uh, first off, happy holidays to you. Happy holidays to you, you and, and your family. Likewise. Okay, so we got, we got Ms. Ms. Henry in the, in the audience today, so we we, we cognizant of that. Okay? okay. Okay, she's there. Okay, fine. Well, look, I, I want to recognize a vet, and just as a, if you don't mind, as a, as there was a, a vet that was highlighted here in the Oregonian today, Sunday's Oregonian, the opinion section. Uh, it was uh, in regards to uh, Judge, Judge Answer Haggerty. As a federal judge, and um, I've been I've been knowing the judge for a number of years, if you will. And and um, uh, I came here as a Marine recruiter, and, and he and he was he was already here, and, and there was some folks that he knew uh, that, that were recruiters and the like. But uh, the judge has been here for quite some time. He's he's a war hero, and and uh, I always made the point about the fact that he was a well decorated person. He served in Vietnam and the like, and but. Um, but there was something about this particular article that Cal and I are going to talk a little bit about the next next thirty minutes or so. But but it was a very interesting article, and uh, we'll we'll talk about that in the next half hour. That's right. Okay. But again, thanks for serving, uh, Judge Haggerty. I understand he's going to be retiring, and again, uh, I hope you uh, hope you enjoy your retirement. But uh, maybe stay a little bit more active. Maybe we can get him on the show here and kind of spend some time and educate some of these young folks and get them motivated for to, for careers in that particular profession and the like. Okay, fine. Right. Well, Cal, let, let's just, uh, first thing I want to do is just, I want to give the, the viewing audience an opportunity to, to get to know you for a minute. You know, first off, let's just talk about how did you get to Oregon? I mean, where, where's, where well, was home? Well, Bruce, I came to Oregon as a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. I knew very little about Oregon uh, until I got the assignment to come into Oregon. And when I came to Oregon and I spent the night in Ashland, Mm-hmm. And when I got to Corvallis, which was my station, the, the Air Force Station, and I shared that with some people in the community, as well as on the Air Force Station, many of them were surprised that I spent the night in Ashland. Now, uh, to my... What year was that about? Uh, yeah. It was about 1962, 63. 62, 63, okay, mm-hmm. okay. And uh, when I told them that, they said, well, and I... And I and, they didn't want to tell me why they said that, but later I learned that <laughs> they was talking about uh, all the sundown laws that were existing in Oregon. and At that time? During that time? Uh, well, during that time and prior, and some still exist today, but, but in, in, in different, in different uh, versions. 
uh, they were worried about whether I was going to the, run into trouble at that time, why I did not run into trouble. Mm -hmm. And then when I got to Corrales, I, uh, the story that I always tell people, uh, I went down into one of the men's store down in town, Corrales. The guy didn't know me, should not have known me from, uh, 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 from apple and orange. But uh, he came up to me and he said, well, you Lieutenant Henry. Now, I was a single guy when I came here at mm -hmm. the time. But he said that to me in a way that he said I got, he was saying to me he had four daughters and he's locked them up and thrown the key away. Now, hmm. now, I, uh, hmm. now, after learning a little bit about that aspect, that one of the things I wanted to know more about Oregon, and I did it, dwell into Oregon hmm. a great deal. And when I came back to do some grad work here at Oregon State, I learned a great deal more about Oregon at that time. But my first introduction to Oregon was 1962. After I graduated from college, I went to uh, Wiley College in Marshall, Texas. Wiley, oh yeah. Texas. A, okay. I understand you from Texas yes, too. Right. And uh, uh, I, I was going to go off to grad school when I graduated, but I got drafted. That's before draft went away. And I tried to get a deferment, and I couldn't get a deferment from them uh, from going in. But how did I, I end up in the Air Force? It's a unique story, too. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine during my junior year was one of the... Uh, that's one, at Wilder. Now you're that's in Texas. Wilder, I'm, talking, talking, Texas okay. I'm in, at Wilder College. Uh, uh, he uh, wanted to go as a pilot. He wanted to go in the Air Force as a pilot. And uh, he was going to Waco, Texas to be uh, introduced into... Uh, or try to pass the test to go to pilot training school. Mm -hmm. Uh, my my friend name was Norris Austin. He was from Houston, and uh, and when uh, when he decided he was going to go, he asked me to go with him. I didn't have nothing to do. I was, uh, and so I decided I would go there with him. And while I was there, the recruiter was there. He came up to me and said, "Do you want to take this test?" I didn't. I wasn't interested in going in the Air Force or Army or anything because I wanted to. Uh, uh, so meet a meet a, uh, a desire that I said to my mother is that she, I wanted her to see her son graduate from college. Mm -hmm. uh, but he uh, he said to me, "Well, you can take the test. You won't have to go now if you don't want to go." I, just, I said, "Well, I decided I would take the test just to see my what my." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I took the test and passed. My friend didn't pass, but I, I, I but I made it. My you mind. passed, but he did. He did not. He was he was de going there to go into the, the okay, military. Right. He wanted to go in into that. School, right? But my point, I was there at Wilder College to get to graduate. I was right. not going to leave there until I graduated from Wilder College. Right. I had set my mind upon that aspect of it. And so uh, I uh, I went back and and when the, on the day that I graduated, I got this order from the, <laughs> from the. Uh, uh, the board. The board draft board, yeah. Yeah, the, the draft board said report to Louisiana, to New Orleans, to, I mean to Sweetport, to be drafted in. But you hadn't enlisted. I it, had it not enlisted. I, I hadn't enlisted at all. Was it just a draft letter? Or uh, it no, just, this is, uh, no, I already. Uh, well, you this taking this test, this guy uh, sent this, no, this recruiter probably just sent that letter. No, say, no, no, the recruiter didn't, but, uh, but, but they were drafting people because of the Cuban crisis right, and, and right, other things going right, on. Right. And so uh, what uh, I went back, I got back in touch with that rec uh, recruiter <laughs> and said, look, they, they're trying to deny me from going to grad school and, uh, and I don't want to go in as an enlisted person. Is that opportunity still available to go to the, the, he told me, we can't get you in right away, but we will get you in uh, uh, after you, after a, a, a three months. And so I went to Lackland Air Force Base Okay. Went through the uh, and uh, the uh, enlisted uh, service there, as a uh, and then I got uh, went to Medina Air Force Station and went into to officer training school and got graduated from that in December. Oh, okay. And then came to to Oregon. Oh, okay. Uh, that was a unique uh, uh, experience in many ways, but it also taught me a great deal about things. It taught me. Because when I was growing up in Texarkana, Texas, I was just like a sponge. I soaked up all the things I could. I read everything I could. I, I worked with my community as much as I could. I saw things from 
from the uh, standpoint of my school, the church, and the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in order to bring about the kinds of changes that we necessarily need, I recognized then I could not be quiet. And I had made up my mind I would do all I can to make a big difference in society. And we went uh, uh, taking the shots. That when, it, when you look at what's happening in Oregon, one of the things I saw here is that we were afraid to share our voices. Mm. Now, I don't know where you're ready to move into what mm. the, how I got the Oregon Center for Black Affairs started. But in order to be able to understand what has to happen, people need to know of your commitment to do something. See, I've lived my life by basically seven words. And that is, I call them R-A-P, <laughs> four C's. And what I mean is that I learned to be responsible when I was in, when I was young. If you go back and look at what happened when I was in high school, what happened when I was in college uh, at Wiley, you see a lot of changes taking mm -hmm. place because mm -hmm. I was there raising the envelope. Was there was race an issue during that particular time? Because I know from Texas, you know, well, you Jim it, Crow. It, yeah, well, I, I grew up in a place where in B Bowie County, Texas, uh, in Macedonia, uh, 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 the people who controlled my school board were all black. Hmm. We had a black superintendent. Hmm. And there was one white school that was part of that district. But all the other things around me were right. I, I tell people I was sheltered in some ways, but in other ways I wasn't. But I saw all this stuff going around that in the political arena, we were not there. In, in terms of what we were uh, masterminding how we can make big difference weren't there. And when I saw what was going on in my church in many aspects, we had a, I had a minister who would tell me that to uh, live a good life and go to heaven. And my whole point was that, what should I do here on earth hmm. to make a difference? Now, yeah. th the big thing to me was that we needed to understand that we need to know more than just what Paul, Peter, and James, and Matthew, and all the other things. We need to know how to use some of those precepts in our daily life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I, I, I'm saying my community were, were with me. They stood with what we were trying to do. There were several of us there in the community was trying to do some things uh, to make some difference. But within the community. In the community. Just within the community. Yeah, but there okay. was racism in, in Texarkana, Texas. Okay. In some of the last, I, I think some of the last uh, hangings were in in, if I recall, uh, in Texarkana. Outside of the community, though? Outside the boundaries of the black community? No, the, the, no, no the, I'm talking about blacks being being, being, yeah, being lynched. Right, yeah. right, being lynched. And, 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 and see, and, and now you, you, you've, you've heard what happened in Marsha, Texas, mm -hmm. with regard to uh, uh, some of the things that were going on in that aspect of it. No, but, but at the same time, uh, our community sort of kept tab on us. Mm -hmm. and made sure that we were not put in positions that we could be uh, uh, be killed or maimed some kind mm -hmm. of way. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I learned during those years is that if you're vocal and you're up front, it makes a big difference to how people respond to you. It does. At least if you're quiet uh, and you're submissive and you, you don't raise questions, you don't look at the things in a way, then you find yourself all at the mercy of somebody else. But when you were going to school with, in, in Texarkana, were you interacting with uh, white students? And, well, see, as you know, we lived in somewhat, not, not the, in, a, in a complete city, in a city setting, we were out somewhat Macedonia uh, was a, a, a community somewhat has a lot of uh, forms and other things. But the people that were all in there were people like me and, and my family. We owned land. Mm -hmm. uh, we had neighbors who were black. We had neighbors who were white. And as young people, we played with white kids just like we played with, uh, with black kids. All of us played together until we began to learn about the birds and the bees. Mm -hmm. Or when we began to go to school, mm -hmm. uh, what we, and we ate at each other's 
deposits along with along along the line. What we found basically is that it was the structure of the system that kept us apart. The laws that, that was Jim, the, we call them the Jim Crow Jim laws. Crow law, that's right, yeah. that they kept people up. But pe white people knew that black people had value. And blacks knew they did have value in my community. But, but there was an overriding fear of, of challenging the system because of the laws, you know, and, and, and the people who had all the guns and all the other things were white people, basically, mm -hmm. and who had, who was always calling the shots were white people. And, 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 and uh, recognizing that made a big difference in the eyes of some of the individuals in our community. Uh, and uh, in, in, the, in the, the thing that I value most about my learning in, in, the, in schools, it's particularly in, from uh, grade and grade school all the way up, was that the teachers that I had, most, all my teachers were black in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the public system, and they saw their worth in the success of the students they taught. Mm -hmm. Now, we may not have had all the good equipment, all the good books, and all the others, but many of the students that graduated with me or went to the school with me could go out and hold their own anywhere. They may not have had all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. they, and and they, the, the teachers wanted to see that happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And see, and they, didn't, they knew my parents, and they knew the other kids' parents, and they didn't mind dealing with that aspect of it and sharing with them some of the things that we necessarily need to do. Well, on that particular note, and I'm just going to interject whatever, what's happened? What, what, what about your town? What, what about the city that you grew up in now today? How, well, how does it look today and how does it compare? And, and uh, the whole issue of education, is it, is it positive? Has it grown from your, from your well, well, in some ways it has, in some ways it hasn't. Okay. Now, I went back to uh, some years ago, uh, and, well, let me, let me say, I spent a little bit over a year in Turkey as a military, uh, and I came back as a captain in here. And I stopped in to visit my aunt and her son in Texarkana, Texas. Okay. That's when the uh, integration was going mm -hmm. heavily in that place. And a number of the young people with children, and uh, in fact, and I have to say, my cousin, I got pretty upset with about. He wanted to tell me he didn't want no black teachers teaching his children, and that made me real upset with him because the mere fact that it was those black teachers that gave me the strength and gave him the strength. He had gone to Tuskegee for a short period of time. And we would not have made these things if we were not for those black teachers. Why, did, why did he make that statement to you? Well, he, he saw that what was what was white is better than what was black. He thought that the uh, white teachers would be more could provide the things to blacks that, that the uh, that the black teacher could not. And that was a sad story, story in my own. Well, had the community deteriorated as a result of the well, statement? Well, made? My, my aunt was working her panty off, if I must say that, to try to make sure there are black teachers doing the integration. See, if you go back and look at it, Bruce, during the time that integration take, took place, most of the black teachers lost their jobs. They lost them to white teachers, sometimes who did have degrees that they had. And at the same time, is that they didn't see their need to teach the children like the black teachers do. Mm. And, uh, uh, and, and when I went back later uh, and I saw what's going on in Texarkana, Texas, and saw that, uh, that there were white teachers who were saying they didn't know how to teach black teachers, or uh, black students. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was sad. Hmm. Hmm. You know? So what was the makeup of the population as far as the district was concerned? Well, I mean, was it, was it integrated at that point in time? Well, the, the integration had taken place. It had taken place. Is it? It, okay. it made me come to think that uh, uh, people, uh, and, 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 you know, we have always looked at, when you go back and look at that period of time, blacks have always tried to feel they have to integrate uh, to be successful or to be 
to be on an equitable basis. We, 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 what we did, we integrated the kids, but we didn't integrate, integrate the teachers or the knowledge base. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, that is the thing that often happened, is that uh, many white teachers at the time didn't think they had to teach those black children so that they could be very successful. Now, and we see rudiment of that even today across this land. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but when you go back to start at that whole thing, you can see how the system was there to sort of keep us in a in an inferior position rather than being actively involved in what was going on. What about the school board during that particular time? Well, the there? school board has was changed. It integrated? Was it an integrated school well, board? Well, when, when the, most of the black, uh, when I was, when that school district that uh, I, was, I graduated from, it was changed. The superintendent at the time became a, a principal rather than being even an a associate superintendent or anything of that nature. But... But it was it was a hard pill to swallow mm -hmm. in many ways when you began to analyze what really happened. And it, it just didn't happen in Texarkana, Texas. It's happened all over the country in many mm -hmm. aspects of it, mm -hmm. about black teachers not being able to be, be actively involved and employed and made a big difference. Mm -hmm. And and but they don't want to see, in many instances, we didn't, uh, I have to, I have to say, at the time, you have to give the individual credit for record stand there to try to make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and when my aunt was working to try to make sure that there were students at Macedonia, our teachers at Macedonia uh, High School and elementary school that were black, you know, when you have go through a period of of, of seeing what really happened, how the cultural underpinning made us feel less secure, less desirable in educating our own children. Hmm. Hmm. It made it even worse. Hmm. See, one of the big things that I've come to in my research to look at is how the vast difference between white parents looking at their children being educated and black parents looking at their children being educated are trained. How's that? In many instances, and the, the big difference to me has been is that black parents give up their children to the school to educate them and train. White parents basically only want the school to, the school to train the kids to be able to be, to do the work or be the job. Hmm. Now, it seems like it's a big disparity in terms of looking at that, but it comes about real clear when you begin to see what is going on in this but what, well, but what about the community, the black community, that basically you basically generated from, and then it was in a very positive vein, and when this integration thing came up, did they just give up and say, well, we're not going to be part of the part of the process okay. to ensure that, the, okay. that it responds to, to, to the values and things that you, you, you had developed under? Well, well the... <laughs> See, the element of fear can control a lot of things. Why? Well, yes, very much so. See, and, and many, of us, many of us say it's not fear. And they, some people get upset with me telling you it's fear, man. But, but when you begin mm. to look at how things are manifesting themselves, you can see the fear. Hmm. When you challenge somebody and you're afraid to challenge them, that creates a tremendous amount of pressure on you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, now, nobody want to talk about that. And that's one of the reasons I said in a piece that I wrote some time ago about uh, the need for sociology, black sociologists and black uh, psychologists as well as historians mm -hmm. to tell the stories yeah. so people can see them, mm -hmm. honestly. And uh, I had a history professor at Wiley College who tell me uh, always, the time, I'm going to teach you his story. His story. His not story. History. <laughs> okay. Now, 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 but when you look at it, that's what we run into. Mm -hmm. When you mm -hmm. see, uh, and, and when you look at why, what is going on now, it's that uh, I know sometimes you, you, you want to bring all of it, to lump it together, but, <laughs> you, but, you, but, but, but yeah. you have to take it piece by piece mm -hmm. and build it. And, and one of the things I have said to, 
I would be a change agent until God called me home. And uh, the thing I want to see happen more than anything is to share with people that you have to start small. It is the small steps that builds into bigger steps or a small uh, undertaking that grows to become giants. Well, we're going through steps with Mr. Henry right now. <laughs> and we got about, I got about another five minutes before we break, but I want to kind of just rush this just a little bit uh, in terms of, because I really want the viewing audience to get to know who you are. You, you've, had, you've been a, a major contributor here in the state of Oregon. It's, I think it's important uh, that we do this because we're going to be talking about a number of issues. We're going to take advantage, if you will, of the, of the opportunities that you give the viewing audience from the standpoint of your, your various involvement. But it's very important that they understand your value system and how it was brought up. Because in all due respect, there's a similarity. As you know, I grew up down south myself. Yes, you did. I went to Tech Southern University, and that's where I basically was raised. But I grew up in Louisiana, aspect of it, comparable to you, like you said. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, we had white families around and this, that, and the other. But like you said, there was still that separation. When the birds and the bees came along, it was a whole different ball game. You got me? Yes. And um, and then like you, I, I, went, I got into the service when I was when I was uh, well, not in Texas, but in California, when I was basically trying to venture out and do some other things. But it was that, that base that I got and that maintains with me today. And like yourself, you got my point. And so, yeah, so the question is, what, what happened with that? Well, why not the continuation, if you will, of, of the value system that was bestowed upon us by those teachers early on? And now we've got a system here today that we're struggling, if you will, to try to get back to help our present generation of well, blacks. Well, see, see, again, when integration came, it, uh, it told people that they can live anywhere, but you can't be white. As I, I, I got a little phrase that said, immigration came and, and told you can go to the white, go to the school, but you're not, you don't, you, you don't feel like you have to be part of the school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you, you can live in the white community, but you can't be white. You can do all these other things, but you can't be this. But the thing that we never taught each other were the political definitions that were going on. Like, like. Uh, well, what does being being white mean, and what does being black mean? Mm -hmm. But we have not, we have not, we didn't get into that understanding to be able to have a, a good grip on that, mm -hmm. and how the whole structure in the United States, or in our states, or in our schools, or in our other didn't share with us what all that means, and we didn't teach it to each other. Now, in some ways, we don't want to learn it today. Uh, see, when people jump up and tell me that we need jobs, I don't argue that point. But are we willing to prepare the individuals to be able to create the jobs that we need in our community? Whose responsibility do you think that should be? I, I think it's all people's responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I think first and foremost to teach the individuals from the community a part of the community's responsibility. Mm -hmm. And we can't feel that we have to let other people teach our children by themselves. See, our children, now I, I, I did some research, some, uh, uh, some, in a, some consultant work in the Portland School District, and people were coming in teaching black children, and white teachers coming in teaching black children. And some of these white teachers are willing to tell me they wouldn't have their children go to the school that they were teaching in. So that's sad. Hmm. But at the same time, black parents were not necessarily looking at what was being taught to their children. See. But did they get an education in that, from their background? Oh, did the parents get did an education? Did the parents get an education? <laughs> <laughs> well, well you, you, you're raising a significant question. Because my question is, are we trained or are we educated? Hmm. There's a difference. Sure, there's a difference. And, 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 I, and I, I was talking with a group of people in uh, New Orleans. One, one guy was in New Orleans, another one was, I think, uh, in uh, uh, North Carolina, was talking about the education process in, in the country today. And one of the guys made up, well, the president had done nothing for education for black folks. And uh, I asked the guy, is that, 
are you aware of the executive orders that he's published, uh, that he had done with regard to education, dealing with the, uh, the historical black colleges and other aspects? But he couldn't see that. And so what I shared with him, and he, he figured he was a well-educated guy. And I had to tell him, maybe you're not as educated as you think you are. You're professionally trained. And, and that's a big difference. Did you, did you educate him? Did you, uh, well, he yeah. didn't like the idea that I used that term. Okay. But, then. but, but did but, you but, spell it out to him? I told him that education is the one somebody can see what was happening and then go out and make sure that it meet the needs of the community. Okay. I spelled out the phone. If you're talking about education, what are you doing in your, in your community? Mm -hmm. What are you doing in your school district? What are you mm -hmm. doing in your state education apparatus? What are all these things that you're talking about? You want this guy to come all the way from the president down to your room, down to your house, and teach you all this type of stuff. What are you doing to make sure that others are with you mm. and we're going to share those type of things? How did he react? Well, he reacted very negative toward me. <laughs> but at the same time, he understood very much that we had a, something that needed to be done. Mm -hmm. And see, that is the same thing that we have to do today. Is that well, I'll we, tell you what, hold your point about that today. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to start right at that point. Okay. okay? We're going to take now a short break, folks, and we're going to get back. And I think it's a very interesting discussion, and hopefully uh, you'll spend the time and, and uh, go get your tea and come on back in about, a, couple, about a, a few seconds, and we'll get right back on, okay? We'll take this short break, okay? You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks. Again, I'm Bruce Broussard, your host here at the Oregon Voters Digest. And my guest today, uh, we're a pleasure to, uh, it's a pleasure having him on today, uh, Mr. Calvin Henry, uh, who's happened to be the president of the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs here in the state of Oregon, been around for a number of years. And what we're doing is that we're, we're just taking some time to give you an opportunity to, to meet Cal in terms of his background and, and how he picked up his own virtues, if you will, and values, his value. And I think it's very important. That, uh, that that we we should know this because he's been very very much involved and and through the uh, through through time we're going to be spending quite a bit of time with Mr. Henry because I think it's very very important especially during these times that that we understand how we all exist here in America and how it takes us all to be inclusive if you will and that has been lacking and and uh, and especially now since the since President Obama has been elected, he's going through his second term aspect. There were people are struggling, trying to figure out how, what his contribution, or, or, or if not that, black folks' contribution uh, to this country. So I think it's very, very important for us to understand. And I think at the end of the day, I think uh, uh, Mr. Henry will, will sort of open up the light and give us some, some of the rationale as to how we, we were. So in essence, at the end of the day, again, uh, the point is that we, we talk to solutions to, this, to the problem that we're having and talk about inclusiveness, you know, because we do have a beautiful country here, and we want to keep it <laughs> if we can, because our, around us is having problems, if you will. So, with that, again, welcome again. Yeah, Thank you very much. Appreciate too. that very much. You know, uh, we, we were we were you, you made a point about uh, uh, about black Americans and, and and white Americans. You were talking about the communities, the separation of the communities after a certain period of time. I, I want us to begin there, but at the same time. And by the way, we're only going to spend definitely 10 minutes. If we need more, and then we'll do more on this piece. But I want to get into the, the defining the, uh, the Oregon Symphony of Black Affairs sure. in this segment here. But, but for the next 10 minutes, because this, this has been something that's, that's been a divide and a concern and, and people not knowing really what it's all about. The whole issue of, of, the, uh, of the, uh, uh, the identity, the culture identity of, of, of black folks. You know, we went from Negroes to colored to... The blacks, and then 
And I went to African American. We got, we, we, and that's pretty pronounced. In fact, as I as I look at the article here in the Oregonian, I think we, we chatted about this for a moment uh, in the opinion column. Is a, and it's 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 the most uh, let's put it the most sophisticated part of the the publication uh, of, the, of the Oregonian, and the opinion. Uh, and, and 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 Judge Haggard is is is, uh, is profile. And in one particular case, it, it talks about the fact that U.S. District Judge Answer Haggerty, the first African-American federal judge in Oregon, says he has few set plans for his retirement. But they make the point, first African-American federal okay, judge. And then in the, in the, in the, in the context of the other part of the, 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 the statement, it talks about him being the first black judge. Now... In one case, there people identify the blacks, and then all of a sudden they're African Americans, and then they're Black Americans. Which are they? Well, well, <laughs> Bruce, we have always allowed other people to define us as a group. The United States is one of those uh, countries that spend a great deal of time, uh, a great deal of time, identifying people along racial lines, mm. and then we lie about it. How long ago did we go back? I guess almost. <laughs> well, well, I'll, I'll have to do some. I have to bring okay, you back okay. some other information about sure. some of that. But at, at the same time, is that we don't the, the country itself or the whites in the country don't want to give value to those groups, in particular to Black Americans. Now, I use the term Black American to, to describe me. What is a Black American? Who is a black well, man? well, let me share this with you. There have been, we have to understand the political definitions that okay. are going on. Okay, all right, all right. And, uh, you know, people view white as being pure and blacks as being less than pure. You know? okay. and, 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 and our system has been dis defined. All our systems have defined, been used to keep blacks in an inferior position. Blacks? from slavery or whatever you, you want to call them, mm -hmm. or, and try to keep whites wherever they come from in a superior position. You know, uh, we can start from a constitution that said that we, after slavery, that we were three-fifths of a person. And then we can go on to these others and seeing that. But what we fail to recognize, in my judgment, is the political definitions that are being used. We use the political definition of whites, everybody who's light-skinned come from Europe or other places, and blacks are those slaves in this country, or uh, other people who want to come in here, we we'll give them the, the designation of black. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up in Texarkana, Texas, even though there was me Mexican uh, living in the state of Texas, now, I, I only saw two kinds of people that I realized, either black or white. Mm -hmm. And it based upon the this, the, uh, the skin of the Texas, individual. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time is that then as you get to know a little bit more about what's going on, you find those folks who feel they can pass, mm -hmm. get, get scared or get mm -hmm. left behind one way or another. Mm -hmm. So the political definition is that we have black people and white people in the United States. And, and we, we don't want to recognize what we call the citizens of the United States. They are Americans. And what I feel that is important, that we recognize that uh, black Americans are those individuals who are citizens of this country, who have the same rights of white Americans here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and only during the 60s, when we started moving to give, when blacks started gaining something, they began to see all these variations of individuals coming. Mm -hmm. Now you see everybody want to show their ethnicity rather than their race. Hmm. And, and, and ethnicity became the definition of race rather than what people had, what the U.S. government and others had used to define who we were mm -hmm. as a people. Mm -hmm. So I have to look at it from the standpoint of a political definition. I say I'm a black America because I was born here, I grew up here, I never was born on the continent of Africa. But, no, I do not understand that I may be a descendant. I am a descendant mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. individuals that mm -hmm. I use a loose. But at the same time, I want people to know that being black and growing up in the United States is different than any other group in the United States. It's different than any other race in the United States. All these other folks that come here, they want to be white. And, mm -hmm. and, 
And many of them have a lot of black background. People are Italian or other, you can begin to see that. But that is the one thing that we have to come to grip with. To me, uh, being black is not a bad thing. And I don't mind sharing my black humanity with everybody. And but a lot of I know that a lot of whites don't want to share all that white humanity with all the black people. But we got to encourage that to take place. Now a lot of things that are happening in our society is making that a lot easier going on. Now, when people use the word African American, they tend to think that you just came from Africa over here. Now, if I was in Turkey, if I had mentioned to people in Turkey that I was an African American, they probably would have laughed at me and asked me, you're not from Africa. Mm -hmm. You're from the United States of America. The citizens of the United States are called Americans. Now, now, now that's a big issue, too, because there are a lot of Americans in other parts of the country, of I mean, the, the continent, mm -hmm. and uh, they want to be called, be called Americans, too. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we have to get people to understand what we're really talking about. Now, that might be a hard pill for some people to swallow, but I think it's important that people know and, and that we own up to the fact that we are black Americans and we don't mind being black Americans. Well, tell me something. Why are we having this kind of discussion in our educational system, especially during our K to 12 now? Well, you know I'm saying? Well, Those are formative years, the most, the most important years of your life, if you will. Well, the big thing is... That if, if I don't teach you about all of that, I can easily control you. Now, now, I'm, I'm, <laughs> uh, it seems like I'm being uh, no, no, simplistic no. about it. We, that's what we want, okay. that's the, what we're the, discussing. The, the point is, you have to say, who are teaching our children? You have to raise that question. And what are they teaching our kids mm. about who they are? And who provide the, the material? Yes, all that stuff. But see... We don't want to do that. We think it's an insult to try you to... You say we don't well, want that. Well, who, who, who? Well, I think blacks think it's an insult. Mm -hmm. and, and so the whites are glad, in many, in many ways, glad that we think that it's an insult and that we don't want to do anything. I think a white person ought to know as much about the black person as the black person know about himself or herself. Right. Right. I think white, black folks are knowing much about white people as much as white people know about themselves or their children. But why are we doing it? We're doing it for control and manipulation. Like how? Give, give me an example. Well, let's take, for instance, here, here is a man. Let's take the president of the United States. Okay. Clear, 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 clear. No president in my lifetime and anything that I have read about these presidents has done more for this country than President Obama. He's done more in a very short period of time against the greatest odds, both from Republicans and Democrats, and I know you're a Republican, but I, but I wanted to, <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but the point of it, what I'm saying here is that how can a man who's done so much can have such a low rating from the people? Why do you think that's so? Because of the media, because of the Republicans who have done all this stuff, or the, or the opinion makers, let me use this word more than anything. The opinion makers are making sure that you don't get the real truth. Hmm. And I, I, I shared that with my neighbor who was white in Corrales, and, and she she told me that, look, that she didn't like what was going on with regard to all, all this stuff. And the point of it, she was right. And that, see, wh what gave me a lot of hope was that people in the United States understood the president isn't getting a fair play when uh, during the uh, election uh, in, in 12, 2012. But he got reelected. He got, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The people understood that something was wrong. They understand and they feel it. They see it. They see it all the time. Now, now look at all the things that are happening around us, and you can see how people are looking at what is happening. And, and, and my mantra has been, what we do for black Americans benefit all Americans. Mm. Or what we do for black Argonians benefit all Argonians. Now, the reason I say that, I firmly believe if you want to know the United States history, you need to know the history of black Americans. But if it's not taught in schools. I understand it's not taught yeah, in schools. How are they going to get to that particular point? Well, some what of us have to help it and encourage it to be taught. That's why we're doing the show. That is correct. Okay. okay. And, 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 and I don't mind revealing my, 
uh, I hope that as long as I got a little bit of breath in my body, yeah. I can share with people what I really yeah. think and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. But I do know that fear stops a lot of from this from occurring. Mm -hmm. And that's fear. the fear. Yeah. Fear. Yeah. 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 Now, now, people don't want me to say that, but I have to say it. Yeah. Yeah. When I can see people want to do some things and they're scared. Well, tell me this now. You know, I know that you, you've contracted with Portland Public Schools and the, the education system in, in Oregon in some way, different, whatever. And uh, wait, did you bring this discussion up and uh, were you ever able to share with some of the responsible entities? Uh, yes, like I did. Schools? Yes, I did. How did they react to this? Well, they were aware of what was going on, but uh, what they didn't see is from the community, the black community. See, if you're not there in the in the, in raising the issues in right. the school, you know, and I know one of the schools I looked at, uh, uh, the principal didn't want me to talk about the issue, but I had to say to him, if you oh, want, you were in the contract. At the I was time. on the contract with Portland Public Schools or uh, with some other. Well, with uh, with one of the schools uh, in public. Portland in Portland Public, public, public schools. schools, okay, but you you were talking about these kind of issues. Uh, yes. And you're trying to educate the teacher. Uh, and the principal. And the principal. That and the school district. And, and the school all district. That, and all that. That. So how did it fare out? You know? uh, well, when I, when I approached the principal who wanted to hire my service, uh, retain my service, I said, now, if you, if you want the truth, hire me. If you don't, don't hire me. Mm -hmm. Because I think I see these children. These children are telling me one story. Well, they're just sponges, you know. They're just sponges, just taking on information. Yeah, yeah, but they also, they want more. That's all he has. I mean, that's... that's and and, uh, that's and I said, now, nah, and uh, I guess the uh, one of the deputy superintendents was worried about how that was going to play in, in, the, in, the, in that grade school. And, uh, was and, the superintendent white or black? The, oh, he was white. Okay. And, uh... uh and when the principal brought me in to talk with the teachers, and I had them fill out a form and all this, stuff, the teachers were glad to be talking about this because they knew that racism was a core issue, mm -hmm. yeah, right, that right, they right. could not reach it. Many of them were afraid to talk to the parents of those students. The students are willing to tell me they're not learning anything. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, that would be beneficial to them when they left there, you know. And, uh, well, these were integrated well, kids here. In, well, well this is one of the Portland schools. Yeah. I, I yeah. went back there when Portland Public School was was different. Then. Right, 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 right. 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 This yeah, is but, okay. but, the, but the point I'm yes, making yes. is that uh, unless we are willing to go out and see what is being taught in our school mm -hmm. and encourage these things to be taught and help our children go, see, I, I kind of believe that all those young guys that are down in Salem's institution, uh, 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 are coming from Portland, these right. young guys, right. and 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 we are not acknowledging how much of an impact Portland School District has had on the prison population in Salem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that's a different, that's a whole different yeah, issue yeah, that we we'll we'll talk about. Uh, but over a period of time, you need to get into all these type of things. Right. But let's get back. I, I'm not, I want to get back to this other point though. You were in the contract of Portland Public Schools, talking basically having the same conversation we're having here, you and I, right now. Okay, at the end of the day, did they adopt the, were you, did they adopt the, your, your, your and, program? And one, one, and, or was I, it just, I, just for the black schools, if no. you will? <laughs> was, it, was it Portland Public School? Were you doing this throughout the city of Portland? No, I wasn't doing it throughout the city of uh, out of uh, the district. I, I looked at one of the schools, and they overturned the school completely. They did? Yes, they did. And, you know, but at the same time, the school didn't get the support it needed to make sure it was it worked. And ongoing? Yes. So it was not ongoing? It wasn't ongoing. It wasn't ongoing, so no. we don't have it. So we we don't we still we basically went back to square one again. Is that what you're saying? I, I'm not saying it went back to square one. You can't go back when you know the truth. Okay. <laughs> huh? So 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 what what do we do, Cal? I mean, you, we still got this black and this white, the black and the African American thing. Well, well, see, see, we have to see one of the things that came. This out is a good. Like, this is a good example right here. It, this it is, is a major newspaper. Is going throughout the throughout the state, and you got to start somewhere. So I mean, I'm, well, I'm looking well, at this article. Well, see, see. Well the respected, new, you know. The well, the news media. See, one of the things that we have to recognize 
that there are state sanctioned discrimination in our print and electronic media. Really? Oh, we have to recognize it. See, uh, the article you brought up uh, here, giving kudos to uh, uh, Judge uh, Judge Haggerty, yeah. Haggerty uh, shared some good things about him, yeah. but left one picture imprint mm -hmm. to tell him he was no more than just a, a boy. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, now that that image will will resonate in a lot of people, mm -hmm. much more than all his good stuff that mm -hmm. he's done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really sad. Mean. Now that's sad. That's now. very sad. I was I was a little disappointed about the article. Now, I, now, I know now, he's a well respected uh, individual, a former Marine. You know, yeah. well, you mean, know he's well a veteran. decorated yeah. the whole nine yard. And, no, no, but yeah. see, one little thing can force people to look at something yeah. good. Yeah. Now, I know that people have said bad things or good things or whatever about me, you know. And me. Uh, yeah. But the point of it is that I don't mind being where people don't want me to be. That's right. We've got to talk about it. we got to talk about this. But see, see, I've been to your, some of your Republican meetings and people will ask me, why are you there? Well, they're, getting, it, there. they're getting there. They're yeah, getting there. We're, we're, we're but, getting but, there. But the reason why I went to those it's that you're making decisions that affect my life. That's right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I have to be. It's where these guys are in the legislature, or whether it's the governor, or whether it's the, whoever it is. If they're making decisions that affect my life, I need to know how they're doing it. So my whole point of it is that when a young person come along and see that, they may look at that picture mm -hmm. and say, "Why is that picture there?" Mm -hmm. Now. You know, sometimes a picture speaks louder yeah. than many words, and and the whole point I'm I'm getting at is that uh, even when your city hired people, uh, dark people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they were willing to say and give out a, a press release as if they were not black Americans. Mm -hmm. They have to be from the island. Or, uh, from Canada or somewhere mm -hmm, else, mm -hmm. and and you know in your city here in Portland, you have a lot of people who look like you and me, but are not. Will never use the word black American, yeah. but they work for the city of Portland mm -hmm. or the county. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we have to be willing to encourage these people to acknowledge how they are working with our people. You get law enforcement and all these other things going. On. I could tell you many other stories, but I won't go into them at the moment. But I think in many ways, it tells you why that I have spent a great deal of time trying to learn this state, this country, and this world. Mm -hmm. See, I, I don't have no ill uh, attitude towards African American or anybody from the island. But I need to let people know who I am. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they can see that humanity coming through. Mm -hmm. I've put my life on the line for this country. I've put my life on the line for people that look different than me. And I've, I, I didn't mind. You studying. want you to do? Well, I, I yeah, just yeah, want, I, I want people to pass on something good to the next generation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like I, uh, I was talking to a young uh, uh, person the other day. And he wants to do something because of what was happening on the national scene. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he jumped up, a little black, young black man, he wanted to say that he was a leader. I asked him, what is a leader? He couldn't tell me. Hmm. And uh, he had met with the, uh, the mayor or the mayor or the commissioner, it was one and the same. They were going down to Salem to meet the people in Salem, and the governor uh, uh, told offered to meet with them at a later date. He wanted to meet with them later. But the point of it, he wanted them to tell him what to do. Now he's demonstrating. He mm -hmm. wants to do all this stuff. And I asked him, what do you want the mayor to do? What do you want the governor to do? Do you know how to get him to do this? Then I asked him the key question. Who is responsible for the security of the people of Portland? You asked him. I asked him. What did he say? He said, the police. I said, you're wrong. He looked at me very weird. I said, it's not the police. It's the mayor and the city council. The po police is the tool they use to bring safety 
and security well, to the people. Protecting safety a lot of times, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah, well, you have to look at that too. Yeah. Uh, but see, if you don't see the tool, mm -hmm. you think they are the issue. Hmm. Hmm. You remember when the uh, the police marched against the city government? Mm -hmm. You know, and the city government weakened and didn't say what ought to happen. Hmm. Interesting. I, I I hope I'm making sense. No, no. Look, Cal, you're making sense, and we need to spend more time. And I and hopefully the 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 the, uh, the, the viewing audience can will bear with us. Uh, because I think it's very important that um, uh, that we that here at the Voters Digest we speak to Cal and, and give Cal the opportunity to to share his feelings and his, his history. He's been here for quite some time uh, here in the state of Oregon. I know that he's worked for Secretary of State, and, and again, uh, you got the web, you got the you got the is uh, where you can find him, Oregon Assembly of Black Affairs, and and guys put uh, put that under the on the byline right now because we only have about another minute because we want to make sure that uh, people can visit that particular site. We didn't spend enough time on that piece, but you can visit that site. And that's, 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 the, that's the website. And that's uh, www.oaba.us, right? Okay, that's www.oaba.us. And I'm sure that there's, some, there's, there's a little blurb in there about who you are a bit, again, on that end of it. But we're going to spend more time on, on the OABA and because we got to okay. talk about politics. We've got, we got elections and things of that nature. And you'll find it uh, very beneficial to get uh, get some, some aspects about the upcoming uh, presidential election and, the, well, in the two years. I mean, things are really hot. And Cal really has some good background along that particular line. So um, we want to make sure that we get that in there, okay? okay. So, Cal, this has been a pleasure at this point in time, and this is just phase one. Well, I look forward to it, Bruce, and, okay. I, and I look forward to sharing uh, uh, OABA and me with the rest of Oregon, okay. because it's, it's crucial that Oregon understand that we don't mind sharing. Okay. Okay. Well, again, thank you again for the time. And like I said, there's a lot of things going on, folks. We can only, and my thing is to focus, if you will, on on some of the issues that are happening here in the state of Oregon. And he's a he's a part of that history. And uh, and uh, and I'm sure that as we get into the election, you'll feel you'll feel most comfortable, if you will, in in, in listening to some of the things and, and some of the some of the ideas and, and thoughts that Cal brings to the table about the upcoming elections. But these these are some very important times. We're going to talk about the Ferguson issues and this, that, and that. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk sure. about that whole issue. It's very, very important because the youth of our future is very important. So, again, thank you very much for being with us, and uh, and do look forward to seeing you again very, very shortly again. See you next week. Okay? Take care. Have a good one.